Hey, thanks so much for taking the time to watch this bonus episode of Indie Thinker. If you like any of the content you see on this channel, please do us a big favor. Would you make sure to subscribe and then click that bell to be notified when there are new episodes available. We post a new full episode of Indie Thinker on Mondays with a brand new guest. And then throughout the week, we post content just like this to keep you abreast of current events and to just discuss them. So if you like this stuff, please make sure to share, rate it on Apple. You can also rate it on our website, indiethinker.org. Anything that you can do to help us promote this content, we appreciate it. So as we all scratch our head trying to make sense of the culture that we now live in and sometimes the absurdity of it, uh, there is a video that was posted online just recently by a guy named Tariq Nasheed. Now, the only reason I care to utter his name right now is so that you can also, too, stand up against this nonsense when you see it. But he posted a video, or at least shared a video, of a young man who happened to be white, who was a Holiday Inn Express worker, I think, but worked at a hotel. And uh, here is the headline. I want you to listen to this. Here's this tweet. It says, Holiday Inn Express worker has a nervous breakdown after he got scolded by a black customer because of a mistake in the reservation system. Okay, so when you read that or you hear that, what that sounds like is, uh, yes, another case of systemic racism. In fact, we must be seeing right in front of our very eyes the prophecy of Robin D'Angelo, white fragility, playing out right in front of us. We see this white man that just cannot handle being critiqued by a black man. But of course, that's not what we're seeing. If you saw this video, and I'm not going to show it to you just because I don't feel like this young man needs any more exploitation, but I do think we need to talk about it. So you'll see in the video, he slaps himself in the face repeatedly. He even takes the computer screen, picks it up and slams his head into the computer screen. What you would see on the video is that he was actually experiencing a breakdown of sorts because the man is borderline schizophrenic and personality disorder. He's been diagnosed with these things. He later on Reddit would go to explain the backstory of what actually happened in the video while also explaining that he is mentally ill. And unfortunately, simply because of the race of the two people involved, now we're using this for an exploitive purpose. We're using it, and this video has three million views the last time I checked, and I'm sure it's more than that today. And it's stoking outrage, but the real outrage should be on the other side. The real outrage should be that anybody would post this clip and try to use it for anything other than sympathy for this young man. So we do have a choice to make. Do we wanna be the boy on the other side of that counter, or do we wanna be the guy with that video recorder? More importantly, do we want to be the people who share that video after the fact and continue to try to stoke outrage and offense in a culture that's already tearing itself apart? So it seems very clear that this man that was recording the video was after the needle in a haystack opportunity that he could become famous by getting somebody riled up just enough to maybe utter the N-word so that, so that he could really make a name for himself on social media. As we continue to see these kind of mere attempts to stoke outrage and to stoke offense, we have to ask ourselves this question. In this generation, has offense become a virtue? This is perhaps the worst part of our culture presently, that we are looking for an offense as though it were some kind of virtue. If you're doing that in any way, I am sorry, but you are not a good person. And we have to start calling this out. We have to start being honest about this. This, this can no longer stand. Good people find a way to move on when they are offended or even hurt. They either chalk up this person and what they did to a bad day, or they just move on and say it's bad character, but they do not look for opportunities to ruin people's lives. They do not grab a camera and slide it on and then press record and then post it immediately to social media to publicly reprimand them. This seems to be a clear breakdown of the social contract that for many, many years that we've had in America, which is this, is that we live our lives, we do the best that we can, but we don't look for opportunities to try to ruin the lives of other people. There's a sense in which now we get to claim victimhood as hero status anymore. Maybe you remember this story with Mimi Groves. It hits home literally to, to me and to other people in my area because it took place just down the road in Knoxville in Tennessee. Uh, this young woman 
was uh, 16 years at the time. She got her license. She was excited. So she took the video camera on her phone and she made a video of herself and she was singing a song that just so happened to have the N word in the lyrics. Well, there was a fellow classmate that also thought that it would be a great idea to save that video for later exploitive use. So two years down the road, Mimi Groves is about to graduate and she just got a scholarship to UT Knoxville for cheerleading. And uh, she happens to do the audacious thing. She wants to post on social media that after the incident with George Floyd, well, now this is time for a racial reckoning in America and we need to stand with our black brothers and sisters and we need to protest what took took place there. Well, this classmate of hers said, oh yeah, you need to protest, and then posted this video, I think, in the comment section, or at least brought this video back up, where this young girl was just simply excited about driving and maybe made the unwise choice of singing a song that had the N-word in it. But that guy said it, so now it's off limits for this girl to say it, apparently. Anyway, she was just singing a song, and more than that, she was 16 years old. Well, this young man thought, this offense is obviously an opportunity for me to make my name in history. And so he did everything in his power to make sure that he shared that video with other classmates and essentially ruined this girl's life, even to the point where that video was shared with the people at UT in, in Knoxville, and they rescinded her scholarship and then encouraged her that it probably wouldn't be best if she enrolled in the school. So essentially, this young girl's life was ruined simply based upon what she did when she was 16 years old. But let's be honest, if all of us had cameras turned on us every second of our life when we were 16 years old, how many of you would be able to do as Jesus said, pick up that first stone, say you have no sin, and then throw it at somebody else? The problem is, is that we are starting to create meaning through our victimhood, and now we're calling it virtuous. This is why I wanted to post this video. This kind of stuff, it causes us to fight each other, and it makes us personally weaker because it keeps us from dealing with our own issues and it constantly keeps us pointing the finger at other people so that we don't get a mirror and look at ourselves. It's creating a culture that is absolutely intolerable and it will do one of two things. It will cause people to just not want to be a part of the culture or it will absolutely implode. This is not a worry. This is not fear mongering. It's prophecy. This is the only good that will come out of this kind of cancel culture and offense laden culture. So I want to take a moment just to resurrect a clip because as we continue to have the conversation of race in America, there's a clip that I don't think we need to forget. And I want to set it up for you real quick because we can't afford to forget it, especially now. There is a white police officer, a female, who went into her apartment. You probably remember this story. It was late at night. She was coming off duty, I think. She wasn't in her uh, in her. Uh, uniform, I don't think, but she was armed. She goes into an apartment and apparently she stumbled into the wrong apartment. She sees a black man in her apartment. She grabs her firearm and then she fires and she ends up killing the, uh, the young man, a young man named Botham. Horrified, she calls her colleagues and then she realizes, oh my God, I'm in the wrong apartment. I stumbled into this man's apartment and I shot him. He wasn't in my apartment. Now, a horrible, horrible accident. Even if you don't think it's an accident, a horrible situation, 100%. But I want you to see the response of Botham's brother. Because what he does here is so powerful. And it's so audacious that we live in such a, an offense redden culture that there are people who actually ridiculed this young man for this response. But I think if we can respond more like this man, we'll see the kind of thing that we need to see to heal the wounds of our culture, to heal the wounds of offense rather than to continue to stoke the fires of offense in society. I can speak for myself. I, I forgive you. And I know if you go to God and ask him, he will forgive you. And I don't think anyone could say it. Again, I'm speaking for myself, not even bad for my family but I love you just like anyone else. And I'm not gonna say I hope you rot and die just like my brother did, but I, see, I, I personally want the best for you. And I, I wasn't gonna ever say this in front of my family or anyone, but I don't even want you to go to jail. 
I want the best for you. Because I know that's what that's exactly what both of them would want you to do. And the best would be give your life to Christ. That's, I'm not gonna say anything else. I think giving your life to Christ would be the best thing that both of them would want you to do. Again, I love you as a person. And I don't wish anything bad on you. I don't know if this is possible, but can, can I give her a hug, please? Please? Yes. So I think it's important that I resurrected that clip for you guys so that you can see and feel, because I know I did, and I'm sure you did too, the power of what forgiveness actually looks like in practice. What we're seeing right now is people break through the coals on social media instead of seeing the kind of forgiveness and benevolence that's shown in this clip. So the media has all but forgotten this kind of thing, but we cannot afford to. Catch new episodes of Indie Thinker with Reed Uerman for free right now by going to YouTube or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts. Simply type Indie Thinker with Reed Uberman in the search bar and click on my face. Don't forget to like, rate, and subscribe to stay informed when a new episode drops.